Hi, this is Joseph Bradley with my first video cast around stop failing and start learning. I'm so excited to talk to you and share with you information of the tricks of the trade, leadership traits, tools, things that I've learned that have made me so successful in business and also in my personal life. So hopefully you get some great insights from this. We're gonna have a good dialogue and we can really, at the end of the day, you can take at least one or two nuggets from each of these sessions to help you reach new levels of breakthrough performance, again, in your business or your personal life. All right, first off, let me tell you right now, man, huge pet peeve of mine is around this failing fast. Let me tell you something. That's a concept that came out of Silicon Valley and who wakes up in the morning and says, I can't wait to fail today, right? Oh, failing fast and failing slow. Neither one of those you wanna do, right? If you wake up and say, oh, guess what, boss? It's all right, I lost 10 million days, but at least I lost it fast. Oh, boss, I lost 10 million a day, but at least I lost it slow. None of those matter. What matters is, is not whether or not you fail fast or you fail slow. The key is, is to improve your rate of learning. And that's what we're gonna focus on, and that's what we're gonna do throughout all these series of, of video casts that we talk about around helping you stop failing and start learning. Okay, there's three sources of power that every person has at their disposal to help them drive success, whether I'm talking about the business life or in your personal life. Doesn't matter whether you're a CEO, whether you're an entrepreneur, or whether you're a VP, a product manager, a salesperson, a realtor, it doesn't matter. All of us have these three same sources of power. Time, money, and momentum. All right, let's talk about time. So here's the thing. We control how much time we want to invest into something, right? The key is understanding that while all things can be important, they are not equal. Let me repeat that. While all things can be important, they are not equal. You have to have a prioritization of your time. In order to prioritize it, you gotta be able to see it. You gotta be able to visualize it. Most of us have a personal, a private calendar that we keep for our job or we have a calendar on our job, but we don't necessarily have a personal calendar. You gotta blend those two together. So the first thing I want you to understand is, is your life is not separated that way. I know we like to try to separate, let's separate professional from business, but in the digital age that we live in today, in order for you to get an understanding of where you are spending your time, you need to visibly see it in a common format in one location. So the first thing I want you to do is put your calendars together. I want you to see, be able to see exactly where you spend your time. Here's the second thing. Most calendars reflect other people's ask of your time, meaning you're not controlling it. I need to see you, I need to see you, I need this, I need to see you, I need to see you. I need to do this, I need to see you, I need to see you, I need to see you, I need to see you. It's a reflection of what other people want. What I want to see on your calendar is, is a reflection of your choices. If you want to drive or you want to learn about how to create passive income, do you have time allocated on your calendar to learn? Whether, that is, whether that's real estate or whether that's an online business, do you allocate time on your calendar to learn? If you want to learn more about a particular topic, have you allocated time to improve your rate of learning by putting 15 minutes in the morning, 15 minutes in the evening to listen to a subject matter expert in that area? My point to you is this. Your time is an incredibly valuable asset and you gotta be aware of how you use that asset. It starts with visualizing and the second thing is taking control of your time. Make sure it's a reflection of what you want, not simply being directed, okay? All right, we're gonna go to our second one in just a few moments, but first, we gotta hear from one of our sponsors. We live in a world where everyone wants to be successful. 
But in all honesty, only those who possess the right keys will achieve true success. I'll let you in on a little secret. Creating value is one of the primary keys to not only achieving, but maintaining true success. If you want to learn a valuable technique that will enable you to create value wherever you go, you want to enroll in Joseph Bradley's online course, Questioneering. Find out more at quest.questioneering.net. The second thing we want to talk about is money. You can put your time into something we talked about. You can put your money, you can invest into something. This is a really, really a simple rule. And we'll talk more about these as we go on. When you think about money, it's a very simple rule. I want you to invest, whether it's in personal, whether it's for social good, or whether it's in business. I want you to invest in things that appreciate. If you're talking about social, it's things that give you strong peace of mind. If you're talking about business, it's things that drive improved value. Point is, invest in things that appreciate. That's what you want to invest your money in and less in things that depreciate. That means cars, right? That means fancy clothes, depreciating things. We want to invest in things that appreciate. Very simple rule, but here's the thing. I want you to do an inventory of where you are investing your money. You will find that many people will invest more in a car than they do in education, in educating themselves. I hear people say, oh, I'm not gonna take that class, that's too expensive. But no, it's okay, I'll take on a lease for a $50,000 car for three years at $800 or $1,000 a month, no problem. I want you to really focus on trying to drive an 80-20 rule, 80% investing in appreciating assets and 20% in depreciating assets, right? So again, understand where and how you're putting, where you're investing your money, something critically, critically important. The last thing I wanna to talk to you about, about money is, especially personally, I want you to think about if you're in your job and they make billions, you're in a big corporation, they make billions of dollars or you're a hundred, or a corporation makes a hundred million dollars or you're on your own, I want you to think about how much rigor a corporation puts before you spend $100,000 on a project or $50,000 on a project? I want you to think about what, what's required of you, business case, business plans, getting others' inputs. Now I want you to think about the cases and decisions that you make buying a car. Some people putting solar on their house. A guy comes or a lady comes to their house, talks to them about solar, and they want to make that decision right then. They ain't never heard about it, talked about it. And in a matter of a, few, matter of a presentation an hour, I want you to spend $100,000 and think about how much the corporation earns. Think about how much value, how much money, how much assets they have, and the process that they go through. And then I want you to think about how much money you have in your savings, how much your income is, and I want you to reflect and say, how do you make decisions in your life? Here's the point. The point is, is take time, take time to analyze important decisions that represent a significant portion of your savings or the money that you earn, right? To be frank, anything over 5%, you should really be having a really, really deep conversation about, right? You should be thinking about that. Do you go off and do you have a business planning session around your personal life? You, do you have a business planning session? Do you take time to go off and have a business planning session where you plan out and you say, well, you or your significant other, here's where we are financially, here's the goals that we wanna achieve, how are we gonna get there? Think about it. Half a day, a full day, think about it. Enterprises with much, 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 much more money, with, with the ability to make many, many, many more mistakes. They do it. Why don't you? All right, we'll hear from our sponsors and we'll come back with our third source of power. Are you tired of facing the same problems every year? Struggling to achieve your goals, consistently meeting company benchmarks, or growing your business? If so, there is a solution to your problem. Questioneering, Joseph Bradley's new book, for innovative leaders who desire to thrive in the digital age. Begin solving your problems by ordering a copy of Questioneering by Joseph Bradley on Amazon today. 
Our third source of power is fundamentally, we talked about managing your time. We talked about mastering the source of money, where you invest. And the third one, probably the most important, the one that most people don't focus on in their personal life and barely focus on the business life, that is momentum. Momentum is about how do you bring others along with you? How do you empower them? How do you get them energy to become your sponsor? To talk about your idea or help you along your cause. How do you do that? Very, very important. First, you gotta, you gotta realize that's a source of power that you have. That's the first thing. You gotta realize that that's an asset that you have at your disposal. Next thing I'm gonna talk about is my one, two, three model of execution. Okay, you wanna build momentum? Number one, whatever your idea is, whatever you're trying to achieve in life, if you can't articulate it in a single page of paper, one single page, it's very difficult to get others on board. Why is that? Because when you're not there, momentum is what happens when they carry that message on. So when you're not there, do they physically carry the message and can they understand the key points of what you're trying to drive? So valuable, so very important. Number two, you got two weeks to align your key stakeholders. That means who do you need support? Who are the key people that you wanna make sure are, are, are in align with where you wanna go? Whether that's on the business side or whether it's on the personal side, you got two weeks to identify and align those stakeholders. And number three, you got three weeks to do what? To gain and identify some source of success. It is so critical that you identify some source of success. Why is that? Energy. We all need it. We all want to make sure that we keep going and we get that power and that excitement to hit that goal and stay on task. Let me tell you, it is okay to be lost. By definition, to be lost means I know where I'm trying to get to. I got a destination point in mind. I'm just not sure on the road to take. That's okay. What's not okay is to be wandering around. That's what gets us in trouble. So when you have waypoints that give you clear indication of success. It gives you momentum to continue on the journey. So you gotta identify what are those key success points. We all need it. Write it down. It gives what? It gives you energy, because you can talk about those success points, and it gives the people that want to follow you the energy and momentum to keep going. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this first session around stop failing and start learning. We talked about your three sources of power, time, money, and momentum. Again, I want you to think about how do you master those three sources of power, so fundamentally important. And I'll leave you with this and we'll close everyone with this. Failure is not about what you don't know, but is determined by what you believe to be true. Challenge those beliefs, go after it, and ensure your success. All right, guys, have a great, great week, and we'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.